Hey, I'm stoked. This board turned out so sick. This is gonna be a really fun shape. Okay, it was sick. Let's go. Hop in some fins and let's go surf. Hey, virgin wax. Woo! Okay guys, I am super excited, super stoked. It's a while back, uh, Greenlight Surf Supply reached out to me and they sponsored me. I'm so pumped, I'm sponsored. And uh, they sent me this DIY board building kit. It's crazy. So it doesn't look like it, but this actually has everything you need to make a surfboard. It has a surfboard blank chopped into two or three pieces. So you just glue it together. It has the resin, has the fiberglass cloth, and it has the tools. So I'm super excited. We're gonna open this sucker up and uh, get going on a board. You know, I bought a blank, bought some basic supplies, and then slowly started piecing together, you know, fancier, fancier tools. I made tools for myself, and I finally started buying them. I bought their Rail Runner tool a long time ago, and their, their G-Rasp, and I absolutely love them. If I were to go back, I would have bought a board DIY kit and just got these tools right from the get-go. But let's open this up. I'm so freaking excited. Green light, thank you. I'm so pumped. Okay, so we have half a blank, second half of the blank, eighth inch balsa wood stringer that you glue in between the two halves. Uh, we have a saw, brush for doing the hot coat. What is this called? Dude, I can't remember the name. Um, This thing for spreading the resin. Stir stick. Ooh, Stanley hand plane. So this is what you, when you're sanding down the board, you cut the stringer with, because the sandpaper doesn't really cut down the stringer well. We've got some expanding stringer glue. So you glue, when you glue the blank together, we have some, uh, some fin boxes, FCS fin boxes, and a cool little tool to cut it in. I'm freaking stoked on this. This is a drywall screen. Uh, you use this to blend the curves on your rails. Super important. Ooh, and really nice sandpaper. Aluminum oxide, they give us the good stuff. 40, 80, 120, 150, 220. Ooh, nice. That's nice sandpaper. Fiberglass, all the fiberglass you can need, sweet. Three things of epoxy resin, slow cure, this is good. Slow cure, I'd recommend if you're just learning. Uh, some masking tape, a bunch of sweet stickers, some mixing cups, bunch of gloves, super necessary. So we got a foam sponge. So you put your sandpaper on, sand the board with it. Ooh, this is nice. So some big long strips of foam to, to put on a table or whatever you're using to protect the board as you shape it. I just have some like pool noodles duct taped onto my, my wooden frame. Uh, this is so much softer. I am definitely gonna use this. This is sweet. And finally the tools. Heck yeah, okay. This thing looks sweet. Okay, so it's three inches thick, 24 wide, six five long. So this is your very first surfboard. You're clearly not gonna have templates. What is a template? So a template is just a piece of eighth inch masonite. You draw an outline in masonite and very, very, very carefully sand it back until you get the perfect curve that you want. This is my magic fish. Greenlight Surf Supply, when you buy a board, they give you a free download code, so you can choose a template that they have. Pop in the code and uh, you get it for free. You print it out, it takes like, I don't know, 10 or 20 different sheets of paper, and it's to scale. And you just lay it on your board, and then you cut out around the template. So this is that same idea, it's just that I've made permanent versions. So with the handsaw, I cut to within a half inch, or a quarter inch of the line. 
good guys, pros, they'll go straight to the line every time. Saves time, saves money, time is money, and uh, they can pull it off, they're fine. However, you have to be so careful that when you're sawing, that you're sawing perfectly at 90 degrees, because if you accidentally cut in, then it totally ruins the shape of your board. Your rail will just be wrecked. And I've done that once. So ever since, uh, I, I'm more conservative. I tend to cut on the outside. Just continue to sand this all the way right to the line. So uh, this is their rail runner tool. It's super handy. It sits right on the edge of the rail and trues up your rail, making sure it's perfectly 90 degrees to the deck. This is looking really fun. I'm so excited. I've sanded to my line really carefully. I've made sure that it's perfectly uh, 90 degrees. I think this is gonna be a really fun board. I'm very excited. V excited. Yeah. So, the next thing to shaping a board uh, for the average saber, I would probably just stick with whatever uh, rocker the board inherently has. But let's check rocker. Let's see. Okay, marking the midpoint of the board. And then you grab what's called a rocker bar. So just a piece of metal uh, and it's straight, it's not bendy. Measure the middle of the bar, put it on the middle of the board, and then you just measure uh, how much the board has rocker on the nose. 12 inches up from the nose, on the tail, and 12 inches up from the tail. Those are the average areas for measuring. At the nose, we're at four and a half. 12 inches up from the nose, we're at one and three fourth. At the tail, one and five eighths. And 12 inches up, we're at seven eighths. So uh, what's important about rocker? So you want enough rocker in the nose so you can take drops out the, the front of the board jamming into the water. So the tail section is a little trickier. You want more rocker in the tail to fit a more aggressive, steep wave. Uh, for really small waves that are not steep, that are really flat, they're not very you know aggressive, you want a very straight and flat board. That's why long boards are so almost flat. So overall, I would say this has pretty standard dimensions for uh, for Cali waves. I don't think I'm gonna change that. If I wanted to, you could shave off foam and make it uh, either more or less rocker. You could shave more foam on the nose and the tail if you wanted more, um, or you could shave out foam in the middle to drop the central area to decrease the rocker. I think these are gonna be very fun dimensions for for pretty much all the waves out here in California. This tail is one inch thick. I'm gonna probably drop it either a fourth inch or maybe a whole half inch. So to do that without power tools, just with what's included, same thing. You literally cut down the stringer as much as you can, sand it, and then keep doing it. So you wanna fade it. So I'm gonna slowly fade up into here. So yeah. We're gonna thin this out. First up is the Rasputin. It's huge, it's long, it makes it really easy to make sure big sections of the board are perfectly flat. That is gonna be fun. Yes. So now is a super important step. It's called foiling the rail. So I'm gonna take this rail, this big blocky square rail, and I'm gonna take essentially a triangular piece a foam right out along the rail. So I'm gonna start foiling or curving over this rail. So you do it in a few steps. Uh, they're called bevels. So what happens is most people take two or three, even more bevels. The thicker the board, the more bevels to get it to cleanly blend. So an important step is you get a piece of foam, scrap foam. So from here to here, I'm gonna measure an inch and eight. Poke a hole through I'll use this to mark my bottom rail. See? 
and voila, free rail gauge. Let's make sure it's accurate. Perfect, inch and eight. So what I'm gonna do is with this gauge, I want to mark a band along the entire bottom rail that's one and one eighth inch. So the idea is, is that I'm going to pull this whole rail all the way into that one and one eighth inch band. I'm not gonna go any farther. So some guys like to do it flat. I like to do it on its edge. But what I'm gonna do is first take a bevel where I cut along this rail at approximately 45 degrees. So sidewall, first bevel. So I might take this one a little bit deeper and I'll blend it down by cutting right here and cutting right there. Two more bevels. Ooh, check it out. It's gonna be hard for the camera to really see, but that is a sexy, beautiful rail. So uh, the tendency is when you're just learning to leave it really blocky and round. So you don't want the rail to be round. You really want it to be like that. So it's easy when you're first starting to just cut it and just barely round it over. But really you want to remove all this in here and get a nice rail just like that. Okay, let's do the other side. So you don't need this cool wooden block or anything. For the record, you can just take this foam and sort of wrap it up like a taco and grab the uh, sandpaper and use it like that. I like to have a block and uh, I just use 581 foam and fabric adhesive spray. I really like this. So this is the fancy sandy block. Uh, it's got Velcro, this is a flex pad, super nice. But I really like this. I've never had one that's so big and just gets so much done so fast. So yeah, I'm, I'm stoked on this. It's nice to have both, but I'm stoked on this. Oh, this is sexy. I love this. I am excited. Ooh, I might be taking this to Costa Rica. So look at that. That is beautiful. Okay, so the next thing is to actually cut a concavity into the board. So uh, I'm gonna mark the fins so I have an idea of where the fins are gonna be placed. And then I'm gonna cut in a big single concave into a double through the tail. And you know, most guys, they know exactly where the fins are gonna be placed. And so they just do the concave first. I do that on most of my boards. But since this is sort of a new shape, I'm gonna mark fins. And then I want to have that single concave breaking and flowing into a double concave through the fin section. So, whew, I'm excited. So this is the third tool, the G-Rasp does a really good job of removing bulk material and I always use it before I transition down to sandpaper and foam. So what I've done is I've cut some generous, or some moderate single concave, so meaning one big concavity through the whole board. Starting, it fades in a few inches from the nose and then continues on till about in here when it starts to actually break into a small double concave. So as the water streams and is channeled through the center section of the board, it adds stability and drive and uh, directionality helps that board want to go straight. So when it breaks here into a double concave, then that central stream of water splits and flows through the fins. And some people like single concave, some people like double concave, 
Um, it really depends on the board and the fin setup and the wave that you're surfing. I really like going to a double concave, so sort of mushier, medium to small size waves in SoCal. I think that for what I'm surfing, for the boards that I'm shaping and my fin setup, I think that works best. I've done some single concave boards and I just never felt like they had as much responsiveness uh, on the tail. But anyways, second thing, in this area where we've got central concave, that bottom contour of the board has been slightly flattened. So it's no longer as rockered right through here. And so because of that, the water is traveling along a flatter surface. So it's encountering less, I think it's called form drag. So it's a straighter, flatter surface and the water's traveling faster. In short, concavity adds drive, I think stability, makes the board faster and adds some directionality to the surfboard. The amount of concave, you know, it totally depends on the board, depends on the wave, depends on your fin setup. Um, generally speaking, I think the, the magic number is two quarters-ish concavity. Uh, you can go less if you have a flatter board, more if you have a more aggressive wave, an aggressive board for really hollow stuff. So now it's time to start turning the rail. So you wanna wrap the rail the very most through the midsection, you taper it in the nose, and about the last third of the board, I'm stopping about here, and I'm gonna do this at the end, I'll show you. So see this band I've cut? Now I'm gonna do another band and blend that curve. What is this? This is drywall screen, 60 grit. We're gonna blend those bands that I've cut with this. Once again, I'm not gonna touch the tail. I'm just gonna go up through the nose. So if you go to a board shop, you look at your board. If you pull your thumb along a board, you'll notice the rail doesn't come flat out to your thumb. The rail is actually slightly tucked underneath the board. The rail is highly tucked through the nose and midsection and slowly pulls closer and closer to the tail. So here, I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm going to just barely cut this in and then fade to the very edge through the tail. So it's tucked, it's tucked, it gets closer, gets closer, and here it's finally right on the edge. So what happens is as water moves over a round rail, it generates lift. But as it comes towards the very tail of the board and it's coming off a very hard, sharp rail, the water just releases fast. So through the midsection nose of the board, we're generating lift because it's a round rail. And when we get to the tail, we just get fast ejection of the water. So it makes it snappy and responsive. Sort of thick, I need to thin that down. So I've blended this bottom rail. Now, this top rail, very carefully blend in to the outline using my sanding screen. Okay, she is done. She's all polished, all shaped up. Oh man. Oh, this is gonna be so fun. Oh, I can't wait. What I think it's really cool about these EPS blanks, this EPS foam is so light. This board is just gonna weigh nothing. I hope this was informational and helpful. Um, man, fun build kit. Love the tools, love this blank. I think this is a really cool board. And shoot, now it's glass time. Check out part two if you wanna see me glass this. Thank you so much, Greenlight. Oh, my God.